Hello and welcome to Oh Yes Cinema Club. My name is Marina, aka Dignified Couch Potato, and I'm joined with a few of my favorite people tonight. We have Steve Dez, Chris, Dino, and Sharonda. Um, tonight we'll be discussing Uncut Gems, directed by Benny and Job. <laughs> I picked this movie in harmony with our category choice to discuss word uh, movies with a lot of cuss words. I searched a couple lists of movies, and this showed up a few times. Um, also wanted to see Julia Fox being the muse of the movie, as she says. I attempted to watch it when it first came out, but I honestly couldn't take Adam Sandler seriously, um, trying to be serious, <laughs> but I'm glad we can discuss it tonight. Um, so let's jump into first impressions. What did you guys think? Let's start with Dino. Hello. Uh, first time watching the, the movie. Um, it's one of those, I don't know why I never got to it. Maybe because from the trailers and all that, it just seems so um, intense or just, just watching it made me nervous. Because the story has been done a bunch of times, right? Degenerate gambler, you know, uh, clearly doesn't know when to walk away, owes money. But I will say, out of all the dege degenerate gambling movies out there, I think this is the one that's probably the most realistic or and probably the best acted, right? Because um, is there a Mark Wahlberg one where it's the yeah, gambler? But... Anyway, all the other ones that I've watched, I'm like, this is just trash. Like, <laughs> and, and this one, spoiler alert, I'm like, yes, finally, you killed the person. Finally. Because like, <laughs> if you didn't, I would go into the world and toss him out that window. I just, I have no patience for for uh, douchebags. Because Adam Sandler, got to give it to him, like, plays uh, disgustable douche really well. So, and I mean, what are the Garnett? Like, it was really well acted. Um, I don't know this Julia Fox. Am I supposed to know who she is? Uh, she was the young girl. No, I <laughs> <laughs> I figured that it was, clearly he's new, but I just I just I couldn't I just the the way Marina was talking about it. I'm like, am I supposed to know who this is? Because I was surprised. I was like, oh, the weekend. That's cool. Like, it's because. I forget when this came out, but I'm like, all right, so he was probably already big, but this came out supposedly in 2012 is when the movie takes place. So it's before The weekend, I think, blows up, if I'm not mistaken. So there were a lot of cool things I thought. It was weird. It was weird that it, it had the intro showing basically the blood diamond and and kind of how where it ends up and then i really thought at the very end when i maybe i'm getting ahead of myself but this is just first impression <laughs> uh also i was trying to eat and it starts with like the broken bone and then i'm trying to have a milkshake and what's the other thing that happened i'm like trying to sip on my milkshake and there's some like other nasty shit and i'm like come on guys colonoscopy yeah <laughs> <laughs> It's like the tube's going there and I got the straw in my mouth and I'm just like, ah, oh, God. And I was like, I'm just going to look away and, uh, you know, I don't see any polyps, so we should be good. Um, you know, and then my it was an Oreo milkshake, so the Oreo was getting stuck in the tube while watching the... <laughs> I'm like, oh, man. So anyway, <laughs> other than that, at the very end, I thought I thought it was a very cool shot because it was like you can see everything through the diamond. Also, really funny Garnett like being like so in tune with the diamond. But when it zooms in, I thought it was just gonna zoom into his sunglasses because you could see the lights reflecting, and I was like, oh, that's cool. Like this is all in the diamond. But instead, it goes into the into the the shot into where you're, the blood. Which I was like, okay, that's kind of nasty. And then I was like, they... <laughs> huh? Did you finish? Yes. <laughs> I was done. I was done with my five guys. Five guys, if you're watching, uh, drop some burgers below. Um, yeah, I thought it went a little too much, though. I thought, like, you zoom into the blood and maybe a couple of light flash and 
and credits. So I thought it was really bizarre and weird that it took a good like minute or so of it being like in the world of this diamond or just like weird kind of glimpses at all. That was very strange. So there were definitely some things that um, that kind of threw me off. But yeah, overall, uh, enjoyable movie. Just way too, yeah. Hmm. Uh, that's first impressions kind of here and there. <laughs> and we'll get back to some of that too um because i definitely agree <laughs> chris what would you say was your first impression this movie made my armpits sweat um the entire movie <laughs> like the entire time i was sweating like i just i wanted him to get killed like 10 minutes in i was like <laughs> i can't watch this guy suffer anymore and then like it just kept going and going and he was making bad decisions there's like a lingering sense of violence and dread the entire time i totally thought what's julia fox's character's name i think julia. it's julia Truly, okay. She, 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 uh, I, I totally thought she was going to be dead in the apartment when he went back with his son. Mm. And there was a was number of scenes yeah. like that where I felt like they were leading us to a place where something negative was going to happen. And at the end, the movie would have been ruined if you didn't kill him. That guy had to kill him because that was so ingrained in that guy's personality. And that guy wanted to kill him for so long. And it was awesome that he also killed Anthony Bourdain. I mean, uh, that guy's Anthony Bourdain, right? Like, when you listen to that guy's voice. <laughs> oh, voice? Because I was like, he doesn't look anything. Well, no, but the guy, dead, his I voice guess, is but... Anthony Bourdain to me. Know, he's uh, right. Eric Bogosian. The only reason I know him, he's in Succession. And he's in um, he's in Succession. He's in a couple things. And every time I see that actor, and I didn't recognize him at first. Um, I think one of the biggest things about this movie is I found it really interesting that they were able to take Adam Sandler and make him like so punchable. And so like he gets beat up a lot, but he also has a sense of toughness and goes at people like never really gives up, you know, like he's always pushing the envelope when it comes to that. And I thought that made the movie interesting. But overall, for me, it was just a long lingering sense of dread and violence that I just was waiting for him to get hurt or something to happen. Um, that was my first impression for sure. Awesome. Yeah. It was failure after failure. <laughs> Steve, what was your first impression? Uh, my first impression. So first time watching the movie, by the way, uh, it's been a movie that's been on my list of like, let's watch it at some point uh, because of just how much praise this movie got. Uh, and uh, it's one of those movies that you definitely need to watch till the end. Because, yeah, the first maybe 30, 45 to an hour, you're still very confused of, like, what's going on? What's the point of this? But once you watch it the whole way through, I think it's, it's a very, very, like Dino said, it's a very uh, realistic movie uh, when it comes to uh, portraying this degenerate gambler. And uh, one thing that a uh, uh, professor said and uh, is... The scene that really stuck out to me uh, based on what you said was the one that he's talking to Kevin Garnett and basically just a position. Hey, when you're in the court, you know, and, and people are doubting you, you want to go even harder. So in my game, that's what I do, too. I jack up the price because I spend 11, 13 months, whatever it was to find this thing. Yeah, it's not worth a million dollars, but. I got to like make it work somehow, you know, all the work that I put into this. So I, I like that everything was explained. And even, for example, the gag with the door, like at first it was like, okay, something happened, but then they used it later in the movie. And I, I yeah. like that there, there wasn't yeah. anything wasted in the movie. And, and the chaos that you were currently like around in all the time, it really got you into the perspective of like Adam Sandler's character. Uh, well, there were two wasted at the very end. I'm sorry. That's... <laughs> <laughs> and going to the zooming in thing, to me, at least to me, I'm you know I'm I'm more of a visual guy, and I deal with like editing and stuff like that. That was the only part, at least for me, as like a visual guy, that I didn't necessarily like because yeah. literally when it was zooming in, I could tell the moment it went from regular to like CGI. Like, I could literally tell when they did that cut, right? I was like, oh, now it's CGI. Now we're entering this thing. 
So, uh, yeah. but overall, at least I really enjoyed the movie. Uh, it's very anxiety driven. It gets you into the character. Uh, Adam Sandler did a great job. There's a lot of cameos. I still, the weekend part, I don't know. I think it was unnecessary, but then again, you know, you kind of put celebrities there to like kind of get more people into the movie. Uh, but yeah, but besides that, I, I thought it was overall a pretty great movie in my opinion. Awesome, awesome. And Sharonda, what, how did you feel? What was your first impressions? Oh, I was stressed out the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> There was a point where I was like next to Steve and I was like, I can't watch it. (laughs) Like this, the buildup, like something bad is going to happen and you know it. But then when it happens, is it a moment where you have finally exhaled? You're like, oh my God, they won the money. (sighs) And then the bad thing happens when you least expect it. So um, for me, that was like, Huh? And then I was thinking of like, why? Like, why did he do it? You know, like, why did he kill him? And I know uh, who was it that said they they were glad somebody died. I did. <laughs> oh, I was so glad. <laughs> just to relieve the stress, I was like, he's got to die. I just I get so analytical, so I'm like, he's on camera. Why did he kill him on camera? Like, if this was real life, he'd probably get caught. You know, I just started getting really analytical with it. But, um, yeah, it was great seeing. I mean, I feel like Adam Sandler is one of the comedic actors who can do drama and do other genres. And actually, we we want to see it. We want to watch it. And it's good. Yeah. Whereas some people, it's just like, mm, go back to comedy because, you know, you didn't really land it. So, I think he pulled it off really well. And there was a moment about 30 minutes in where I was like, because, you know, the story just starts and you just get lodged into the middle of the story. And so I was like 30 minutes in, like, what? Like, I didn't know anything about it. I hadn't watched a preview or anything. And so I was just kind of like, okay, here we are in the middle of the story. Like, what is the purpose of all this? Like, what is this leading up to? You know, what, why are we seeing very, like, some very intimate moments of this person's life? Um, so, yeah, that was yeah, just. She, she was telling me in the beginning, she's like, this is a lot of talking. Like, everybody was just like, <laughs> just chitter chatting. But I'm like, that's a lot of F words. Like, the F bombs, it, it was not, you could not not notice that. <laughs> there was so many F bombs in a row, you know what I mean? Over and over and over the whole movie. I definitely, I, for me, that, that, I don't know if that's the anxiety part or whatever, but the f bombs and all that. And after the first like five minutes, I just didn't notice anymore. No, unlike Wolf of Wall Street, this one I was just so like, someone kill him already. Maybe that's why I was just kind of like, <laughs> this guy is the worst. And I was like, I was like on his wife or soon to be ex, if you will, on her side, just like. Get the kids and run. Actually, he's already not living there. Just change the locks. Like, get him out of there. So, I um, I didn't notice the f bombs. I have to agree with that. Like, it was I don't know maybe because it's like the rough, the sh- like the streets. Like, it's not. Um, it just seemed like it just went along with their lifestyle a little bit more, so it kind of blended in. Um, but yeah, the first impressions for me, I briefly touched on it a little bit, but first time I tried to watch it, I have to agree that not watching a preview maybe was a huge issue because I was like, this is chaotic. Like, I don't care about this jewelry store. Like, I, I'm like, okay. Adam Sandler, like, what is he doing? I was like, ah, I'm out of here. So re-watching it, I actually watched the preview this time and I was like, oh, okay. I like a little like a little gambling addiction story. So, <laughs> so I watched <laughs> a little bit more knowledge and like as to what was going on because it's very intense. So like, if I don't know where the intensity is, that's how I am in real life. Like, I'm good. Like, <laughs> get me out of here. But knowing where it came from and that he was, like, fighting for his life but also having a little bit of an addiction problem kind of made more sense and, like, helped me navigate. Um, but, yeah, as far as him dying, I'm I'm, a, I'm sentimental. So I wish he would have just been cured and, every, you know, take that $1.2 million and help his family. Like, in a perfect world, that would have been happy for me. He wouldn't have. He wouldn't have. He wouldn't. 
He just needed one more bet. Okay. He just needed it was only bet. it was only the semifinals of the playoffs, man. He still had the finals to go, like wherever Boston was at it. Who, who, Listen, who, who, he would have he would have grabbed that cash money that he won as the prize, and he would have put it on <laughs> Who who was it that um I mean the parlay started with the tip off? You miss a tip off, that's it. I don't totally. know that much about betting, but I know enough that you that's gotta stupid. Hit on all of them. Yeah, it's like a coin um, flip. So but but it's like why did they shoot him? It's like, you know what, a game seven with all the timeouts and everything, that's what, like three hours, maybe more it depending. Been oh yeah. You pissed off. And you're off stuck up. you're stuck in a phone booth. Like Come on. Like, I feel like yeah. that guy didn't like him the entire time. And then, like, I th I think he, too, probably realized, like, this guy is a freaking idiot. Like, he might try to kill me for a bet or something like that, too. Like, he was just definitely very OG from the jump, like, punching him in the face at one point. Like, he just That's did not have right. time for him. He's like, you're an addict. I'm a gangster. Get out of my way kind of thing. Um, <laughs> and so take all the story. My, my quick question before, I don't know what else you, you want to ask. Uh, you have a talk about, but I thought the other guy that gets killed at the end, who I guess was family from marriage or whatever, I thought he was the lead gangster. That's why he was sitting in the front of the of the of the pickup or wherever when he got picked up. But, I didn't. For example, this is something. This is something that I explained to Sharonda. Like when we find out that he's family, basically, he's weak. Yeah. Like. He's weak because he's like, oh, you're not so tough when you don't have your guys around. Yeah, the bathroom, and, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. the, like, the, the, the whole guys, for analogy is he was the boss, but there is a time where people take over, and that was just that. He's like, you're not guiding this ship because this is like your Jewish friend and your Jewish community. Like, I need to take matters into my own hands. Like, that's very much what it felt like. Like, you're too weak he for was never, He was never really threatening. He was leading the charge. He was telling, hey, give me the underwear. Hey, this and that to put him yeah. in the window, and the other so guy. Was, was he, like, yeah, he he was the boss. Yeah, the he was the person guy. paying. Man, they were like henchmen. Right. And, yeah. But clearly, he's not high enough or wherever that they were finally just got tired of this shit and and offed him there at the end. Okay. Yeah, got I it. believe so. So that being said, we can get into like favorite scenes. What would you guys say is like your favorite scene that kind of showed you what was going on on when you when you kind of lost hope in Adam Sandler's character? Um, we can start. The, again. Okay, go, yeah, Dino. The lingerie scene because he's creeping from a closet. I lost total hope for him at that point. No. <laughs> um. Oh man, what one that hit me? I don't know if it's lost hope. Is when when he wouldn't get up from TV to go uh, to go say goodnight to the kid or whatever, and and the the wife is like, it's the first quarter, like and I think I saw the score or whatever, and it was like eight five, and it, it was like, yeah, I was like goes you know, and then when he goes to the kid, and then the kid talks about how he has a bet going as well for that game, and he that that's clearly at that point. Oh, any, any, I had already kind of not respected him from the beginning, or he wasn't even likable to me. But like seeing that, I'm just like, this guy, this guy is trash. It's just like, this guy is just absolute trash. Um, and then I was thinking when he was naked that he would go in, in the back of the theater to try and get some clothes from the costume department. And that, <laughs> that was, but that would have made that would have probably been the more comedic Adam Sandler movie that he gets his clothes taken away from by some gangsters and he ends up naked on the high school stage of his daughter's show. But yeah. So uh, I'm gonna jump ahead. Uh, my I'm between so many different scenes because there's so many really great scenes in this movie. But like one of the scenes that I felt empathy like the only time i felt empathy for adam sandler's character was when he was like um when he comes to work and he's all beat up mm -hmm. and he's just telling people hey just tell people to go home and stuff and he doesn't want people to see him in that position and that's the only time that he goes like i'm everything i do is wrong and i'm just trying to get out of this situation 
that scene was very powerful to me. And the scene that was super powerful to me also was when he has Kevin Garnett with a bag of money and he wants to know the truth of like, oh, how much does this cost? But at the same time, the gangsters are coming in. So he has to think very quick, okay, how do I get this money into the game that I'm convincing Kevin Garnett to play hard so I can bet on him? So like he's doing all this stuff, sending a text message, meet me over here, the girl is leaving. Like that scene was very powerful to me as well because it showed you how like when you are so in such a deep hole, you have to like think so quick that you can't even flinch. And it, it, it was shown very well in this movie. Yeah, he had a one track mind for sure. Like even I think they showed it like when people were talking to him about other things, he didn't care. Not or not so much he didn't care, he literally couldn't hear. Um, because he would be so focused on whatever he was thinking about, like when the rock came, the opals, he just like the guy was like threatening to quit and he he was like, All right, you know, this is my prize. I, thought, I, I honestly thought that dude quit and then I saw him working there. I'm like, okay. No, 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 no. Oh, he came, he came back. back. Okay. He came back. I thought he was working at that other place because they, they were when where he went to pawn off. I thought the Celtics uh, uh, ring. ring. I thought I thought that's where where that guy ended up going to work. But may, maybe I'm wrong. That I I thought he was working at another joint that um, Adam Sandler ended up going to. Rhonda, you want to say you were to see? Oh yeah. Um, I all for the comedy so the at the dinner and him and the wife were off to the side and he was trying to be charming and like win her over but i just thought it was like they weren't saying much but they were just looking at each other just giving each other these looks and the tension was great and it was like the comedic timing of everything was great and then like i just feel like she probably put up with him the most out of everybody, right? So once she reached her breaking point, I just thought it was hilarious because I'm like, she's going to snap. Like, she's just laughing. But this is like one step away from her snapping on him. Yeah. I felt I, it in I, my heart when she said, you're like the most annoying person I've ever met. Like, he just did, he just put everything, like his last bet, I guess you could say, again, on his marriage. And she was just like, No. <laughs> But, but you see, I don't think he was sincere, though. That's why I think sincere may be in the way that clearly that's not what he wants. But he feels like he's lost. So it is that that maybe, you know, he he's kind of realizing also his girlfriend, young girlfriend or whatever, can easily move on from him, right? So it's like, oh, shit, uh, maybe if I get my wife, it's going to make me feel good. That's the only thing I could think of. Not that he really wanted to get back. So I think that's where the wife knows that she won. Because she's like, oh, yeah. No, I'm good. Like, I don't need this type of thing. That's how I thought anyway. But good thing they weren't divorced because hopefully he had some sort of life insurance that, you know, or whatever. And, 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 and probably work insurance because he got mugged. So maybe she'll get that money now. You know, oh, yeah, and right. and the apartment, you know. So you have the girlfriend with all that cash, which is interesting to see what happens. But anyway, I'm going into into no, the, I'm uh, into whether the, or not he would he was genuine or not because uh, affairs are I interesting. I don't think he was. Like, yes, it was probably because she left and she was gone for good, for good, and so he was like, "Oh, let me run back to my wife." But I, I just remember when they were leaving the club. And he was like, I'm rooting everything I have for a skank. And I just feel like there was a little bit of him realizing that he had something. Like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, maybe he fell out of, like, lust with his wife. But, like, he has issues. But I, I am curious if there was something to him that wanted to start over with his wife. Huh. I don't Again. know. I don't <laughs> You're like, that. nah. <laughs> I, I didn't see that, but, but, but who knows? I mean... Chris, what about you? What was your he favorite? He just lived in a world of frustration. I don't know that he could ever be settled at that point. Like, no matter who he ended up with. Favorite scene in the movie is the one where they go up to go to the apartment. And uh, he's like, yeah, the uh, dad from Good Times is my neighbor. And I was like, oh, is John Amos going to be in this? 
And then he opens the door and he's like, no, you can't use the bathroom and just shuts the door. And I was like, perfect cameo. That was awesome. <laughs> like, can come into America. Wait. I was like, yeah. no, it's cool. He's a legend. He's a legend. I yeah, that's 100%. That he story. totally defended him. He's like, he's a legend. So that was Johnny. You talking about OJ Simpson? John Amos lives like 15 minutes from me, by the way. Um, Oh, really? I do later want to talk at some point because we already started to discuss it about a scene is the one about those beginning scenes with the music that you guys were talking about with the colors. I think we later on at some point, let's definitely explore that. So real quick, just going back to what Marina said about like going back to his wife and stuff. The only reason I doubt that part is because the only time we see him actually have like a real connection with something is like with the whole aspect of gambling and the diamonds and everything. Like he's just connecting. The only thing he connects to is with what he's doing because he's just trying to get out of how much he owes to people. But he had no connection with his son. No connection with his daughter and no connection with his wife and no connection with his mistress. So, yeah, like, I, I, I don't know. I, I think he doesn't love anybody. Like, the, the <laughs> ultimate finale for him was to basically die, yeah, or lose it all. Which, I mean, death, I guess, is the ultimate <laughs> losing it all, but right? If he loses the money, it's the girlfriend. Oh, sorry. It's, it's kind of one of those things, too, where it's like, he is the eye of the storm. Everything that he does affects and pulls all the, I mean, look at the guy who got pulled into the auction. Like, yeah. everything, and there were so many people. Like, when you thought there was nobody else, there was another guy who he gave a fake watch to. And, you know, and uh, Lakeith Stanfield's character, who he had the watches in the safe, and then they weren't there. Like, everybody in his world gets pulled into his chaos, you know? And it's like, it's almost like one of those things where it's like, they're enabling him, you know, yeah. because, you know, whatever it is, you know, why, why people get married, why people stay married, right? Or um, doing business with him. And it's like, why? Why is everyone so invested with him if they know he has a problem? And why does right. everybody always like, threaten to disconnect from him but nobody ever does like they keep dealing with him also i wish i wouldn't know that's this the only caveat the only thing i wish i would have gotten from the movie i wish i would have known how much he owed i just wrote down created tension with the money because we never knew how much he owed i was thinking the same thing i just wrote that down i almost (laughs) think i i almost think it might be better not knowing Right, because oh, I feel you like didn't know if other... it was enough money. Yeah, with the bet, like if he would have yeah. had enough money. Because clearly he was going for them for a million, right? For yeah. the stone. I mean, that's what it was, and he was extremely upset. But then, when they uh, whatever the the auction house was, you know, gave the estimate that, I mean, if he actually even paid a hundred thousand, which I don't even think he paid a hundred thousand. I think that's just what he told uh, Garnett. But, which that scene is super interesting and very part in realism and the whole thing of blood diamonds and stuff like that. But I almost think it, it made it better not knowing the number, right? It creates like, more tension. Because he was yeah. betting at multiple places. So I thought he was actually going to get shot by the skeevy twins. I think Me too! Two, right? I was just going to say that. Like what we're not focusing on was going to be the thing that comes. Because that's why I thought like, oh, he made them happy. But then the two twins are going to come in and shoot him. But over over the the fake Rolex, you know, or whatever he owed them to, uh, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, But that's funny. That plot was kind of useless. I mean, it it made you know that he owed someone else. Like we're focused on this one problem. He actually owes other people things too. But I really thought that was going to be it. We were going to be so focused on the guys that are in the the glass room waiting that the twins would come in and kill all of them. That's what I thought. Like they were just going to be like, you know what? This is our money. Um, That would have been cool. What were you saying you want to discuss about the lights? 
Oh, just uh, that. Did anybody get a sense of why the hell that happened? Like, it was almost like someone made a decent movie, a good movie, and then they were like, you know, I really want to have this thing at the beginning, though, where I'm going to play. The music was like something from Tales from the Dark Side, 1983. Like, and both scenes, the very beginning and the very end, bookended with those visuals, right? With the going through, the ones that um, Steve was saying they were edited badly. But I don't really, they didn't have a purpose. Like, I was trying to be like, what, why? How do I connect that? Like this world does not seem like it will be connected to that. Or I don't, I don't know. That definitely threw me off. It gave me like Queen. What was that movie? Queen from a dream vibes. Requiem like, from a dream. Yeah. Like yeah. just like distracting you somewhat. Maybe they didn't have anything else to talk about. So they had to make like this enchanting moment. Yeah. With the rock, I'm not. I'm not sure. It seemed like Although it seemed I'd like, it was I'd like love to see movie. Queen from a Dream, whatever that movie is. I want to oh watch that. As well. <laughs> it's so weird. It's um. It's Requiem for a Dream. No, okay. I, I know. I, I yeah. Requiem oh, for a dream you're is silly. Up. He's silly. <laughs> you see that window? Jump out. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Um. So with everything that was happening in the movie and Julia Fox says that she's the muse of it, do you guys really think that was real? Do you feel like the writers may have really liked the concept of a character like that and they wrote the movie around it, like being in love with that kind of woman? She, she was... I still don't quite fully understand what the Why Julia, she was like, <laughs> does she know the writers? Does she know, like, uh, I'll actually take it if she said I was stoned when I said that. Because in the movie, at times when they're saying jam, it does kind of sound like jam. Or maybe that's just because I heard before, because either you or someone else or Jason was bringing up Anka Jam. And then I looked at the video, and so now watching the movie, I was like, I'm gonna watch this movie, and all I'm gonna hear is just Anka Jam. So they don't I've really say Anka. Her, I've never heard of her before, I'm not sure what else she's been in. She just had gotten kind of on the map because she was dating Kanye for a little bit, and um, they asked her if she was Kanye's muse, I believe. And then she mentioned, like, Oh, I could be because I'm the muse of this movie, so I'm not sure how she. Yeah, like, and does, has anybody seen her in anything else? No, and she looks really different in the movie at different times, like completely different. Yeah, she has that kind of look too. Um, and Dino's favorite scene when he's in the closet, I was like, I was not expecting that body uh, <laughs> in her lingerie. I was like, oh, you she's think got a little curves. What what I was thinking was she would be messaging someone else, right? Yeah. Like, I was thinking, like, maybe it would be some, well, it was before the weekend, but I was I was thinking that she would be, you know, he'd be like, oh, what are you doing or what are you wearing? And she would be like, oh, nothing. But then she'd take pictures and then he's like, oh, she's sending those to someone. That's That's where my mind was at, like, his whole life is shit and is being played at a completely different level that I guess they not. did a good job at also putting tension there because you did expect her to do something wrong the entire time. I'm actually really indecisive as to whether or not she really cared for him or just like the fact that he was paying her rent. Like I, I don't, I don't really know. <laughs> for for an apartment next to the dad from, uh, <laughs> Because it was always something, like, even from the beginning, like, oh, you had a party last night. Um, you didn't tell me. She was like, really good with her words, but technically we never saw her do anything unfaithful. Like, even when she was in the bathroom, she was, like, telling the weekend that he couldn't do anything. Like, she'd flirt, but... Did they start right. something? I, I couldn't like, tell. I know it was, like... Oh, go, sorry. Yeah, I was saying, she... she tat it was a disaster, but she tattooed... His name on her butt. Oh, yeah. I remember, sorry. 
I think yeah. they did that. I think that's what that part where, where he was in the in the closet. I think that was important, and I think that showed that she really did care about him. Because I was expecting her to write stuff like sexual, and then be like picking her nose or doing something else. Like that was not into it at all. She was really into it. Remember the scene where she leans out the window and he hands her the money. He, and the last thing she says is like, I really wish I could kiss you right now. And I was like, that was a cute moment too. Like I felt like yeah. there were times in the movie where that happened. And I was like, I genuinely believe she likes him. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm really curious. I'm like, I guess they never show like how he's they the bond. boss, I guess he has money. I mean, he's just, you think she, okay. So you, they probably met. And oh, speaking of looking different, I didn't realize that was her as the employee. Like um, mm -hmm. for a minute, I thought there were two girls. I thought there were two girls, or was there only one girl? In there was two girls, but she was definitely one of them, and I didn't okay. see that at first either. Yeah, so she like came home and got undressed in the same mm -hmm. outfit she was wearing at the shop. I was just like, ah, oh, yeah. Um, anything you else you guys want to kind of discuss from the movie? I feel like there was so much besides him being a, a hot mess. <laughs> Did that helicopter pilot look like uh, Michael Douglas? Is that Michael D Douglas? And I'm just com with a wig, or am I just yeah? Completely... That was that... how did we not talk about that yet? How about the guy brought the money to her, the million dollars in the car, and didn't That's take any money? Right? Also, also, oh, yeah. <laughs> also, wait, wait, wait. Also, you get all your clothes stripped out of you. You get your boxer taken out of you. You get Arky. You. He's breaking up a little. Yeah, you're you're kind of frozen. Can you repeat that whole thing again? We lost okay, you, now, and you lost your boxers. Yeah, no. we we heard lost boxers, and no. then you froze. I, I say you lost the boxers. You lost the clothes. You lost the, you lost the car keys, but you somehow you still got your phone. I know. Yeah. That was weird. I thought of that too when that happened. Yeah, I was like, maybe they don't. Like, How is he gonna get out of here? It's like he has his iPhone. Was it up his ass? Out. Like, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but didn't he also have his boxers on when they opened it? The and was... not, not when she opened it, but it almost seems like there was a, an extra pair somehow in the in the trunk. Maybe because he had was... clothes somehow too. He had another set of clothes in the yeah, car. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of scenes where you totally give up on somebody, like when she, she was so over it, she didn't even ask questions. He's like, I'm good. And she like ran back to go watch her kid be in the play. She's like, uh -huh. all right, <laughs> do what you have to do in there. But yeah, who was the helicopter guy? I thought he was the guy who sang. Like Wayne Newton? Two Tickets to Paradise. Like what was that guy? That's, uh... Two Tickets to Paradise. I'm going to say. <laughs> Eddie Money? Is that Eddie Money? That's Idina Manzel also? Wow. Uh, did I even oh, yeah. Let, let it go. Well, I just wanted yeah. her to sing the whole movie. <laughs> I've never, I don't think I've ever seen her play in anything like that either. Like She was on Glee a lot. Um, Tilda Swinton did the, the voice for the auction. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, this movie must have been a movie that people wanted to... Was this... Uh, like, all right, so serious question. Was this one of their first movies? I, I don't know those guys. Oh, uh, I don't know, but it's an A24 movie. They're a lot younger than I thought. Um, and they're brothers. I don't know who... You guys know who Ronald Bronstein is? He wrote it with them. Um, no. No, I, I read something that they based the movie very, very, very loosely on their dad, who was a diamond exchange guy. But I, I don't think it's like that was the story of him. Yeah, I'm not noticing anything else that they've directed. Because um, they got a lot of hype, man. This movie got a lot of hype. Uh, I guess it was 2020 yeah. also. Um, well, he, he got nominated, if I'm not mistaken, in the movie... I, th I thought Adam Sandler got nominated for something. Maybe it's maybe really not. tough to make a movie with Adam Sandler in it and not see Billy Madison. He cannot control himself most of the time. You know what I mean? Like he go leans back on that, and then every once in a while, like uh, Punch Drunk Love, I didn't see Billy Madison at all. This movie, I didn't see Billy Madison at all. There Even was one was moment. There was one moment he was yelling something, and I was like, "Oh, 
that's Adam Sandler's funny yell type of thing. I can't remember <laughs> when, but I just thought it, it's the one of the only times that like I got taken out of it yeah. for like it's Adam Sandler. It was like, ah, what? <laughs> I can't do it. Yeah, you can't do that if you're Adam no, Sandler, or else we, we yeah, see yeah, Adam yeah. Sandler. Um, yeah, that was funny. Do you guys know much about how like the, that works? Like people br uh, bringing, I kind of want that job. Like you bring people to jewelry stores and you get a commission. Like that was such a random role too. Like their dynamic and of like, Lakeith? yeah. And I had so much anxiety about the ring and him bringing the rock back. Like it was just, it was very interesting. Like, you yeah, know, and then you find out he screwed over Damani and sold the watches on him. Like his other watches were being pawned out. Like it was, there was tension the whole time. They did a really Every, good job. Well, everybody was screwing everyone over. Right? Everybody Basically. lived under their own set of morals. Except and I think the it's girlfriend and the wife, but yeah. I think it's a good point to what Sharonda said about like, why were people like constantly let down by him, but continuing to keep him around? I think, because shady people accept shady people sometimes. Like, you know, if he does win the bet and if he does pay us back, like, unfortunately, some of the people who need to borrow that kind of money have some type of issue. And and also, just... who, who, this is, this is one question I have. Who was that bald guy? I know he was like going to the store because they show him, but that was about it. The bald guy that I like basically helped him get into the VIP for the weekend. So, I think you guys remember in the beginning of the movie when the girl brought a necklace and was like, "Oh, he, he wants you to praise it." Or it was Michael it. Jackson. It was Michael yeah. Jackson on the cross. I do and remember. So, like, that. I, I forgot think about that, that guy. Got those girls into whatever party they got that necklace at, and so that's how they know. That's how he knew him. They were very vague on that, but he was just like, just by him saying, "I need that necklace back." soon yeah. kind of made me feel like oh he's a club promoter that just knows him which he had already pawned off as well I'm like, and lost gosh that's in my face i was like well, i'll come back tomorrow to get it nope people believing his lies like oh i left the ring at the house oh my gosh like so so this is where the only interesting thing in the movie i think it was the gambler that they're like, we'll come and we'll break your legs and we'll do this or we'll kill you. And he's like, well, if you kill me, then you won't get your money back. And it's that kind of mentality where I guess degenerate gamblers are like, you got to keep lending me money so I can make back your money and then you can have it. And I think, I don't know if that's kind of Adam Sandler is also like that character, you know, if the, the gamblers are like, oh, I need one more and I can pay you back. Because I guess in theory, if that original bet that he had done, that apparently then was halted, yes. he also made, the, the first time that Garnett had taken the rock with him, it, which I love that part. Like I could have, it's like that, I would have loved, I don't know how he got involved with this, but just the idea of like, yeah, I just feel like I have this extra power and this connection with this rock and that makes me play better. Like, I don't know all that. I wasn't sure if they were already using, like, was that an actual game seven? Like, was that... So like... I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to piggyback on that. That's the only thing about now thinking about the movie. That's the only part that I think is so unrealistic. That, like, during a uh, supposed NBA finals, like, a player is going to be, like, trying to get, like, diamonds and stuff. They should it's be, like, all, like... Yeah, like they should be focusing on the game, on practice, and all this stuff. He's like taking nah. time on his schedule to go to auctions and like that was the most believable guy. thing for me. No. <laughs> <laughs> they sprinkled it in. I think at one point they were like, "Shouldn't you be at practice? You should be stretching it out." Like, yeah, it it was. There's so many levels to like what the heck is going on <laughs> with this, <laughs> but I'm yeah. What were you gonna say? I, I thought it was ironic that he was the one pulling everybody's chain, and then Kevin Garnett just goes off with his million dollar, you know, stone, and now the tables turned on him. Now he's yep. screwed because someone else is giving him the runaround. Yeah. No, that I mean, if if we're talking about empathy or whatever, that was the only part. Like, 
you just got screwed over by Kevin Garnett. And uh, like that, that to me was the only part where I was kind of like, Ooh, kind of feel he was celebrity shocked or whatever, you know, like, and just yeah. gave away. And then because, I was like, oh, this part with the D money part where they go to the practice and he just walks away from him. I was like, that didn't make any sense. And I was like, I didn't catch it. He was acting like a total idiot at the practice and knocked the ball out of his hand. And I totally would have done the same thing. You know, like they did explain a lot of times when something seemed a little off later on, they kind of gave hints as to why shit happened. I thought that was important too. The writing was solid. Yeah. Yeah. Right. For sure. Anything else before we jump into final thoughts? I don't think so. being an idiot? No. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into final thoughts. Dino, you want to start us off again? Sure. Um, again, it's a A24 movie, which are just, they've been killing it, I guess now, what, for the past like 10 years? So this is definitely up there. Is it a movie that I would watch again? Probably not. Uh, is it a movie I would recommend? I mean, if you're talking about Adam Sandler movies or comedians that are able to uh, do like uh, dramatic acting and all that, I might bring it up. But I just can't see myself like recommending this movie to anyone uh, just because I don't know if the people I'm around mainly or the people that I, I like. I have so many other movies that I would recommend before this. So like, it's a good movie. It, it has some shocking parts in it. It has some really cool segments and, and stuff like that. Uh, and it's good. I just don't, it's just not on my list. And I don't think I would ever get anywhere near my list of movies. <laughs> so, it's, I mean, and he got what he deserved. And I mean... I don't know about his buddy getting that. That's the or not even buddy at that point anymore. Um, yeah. So anyway, that's kind of my final thought. Cool. Chris, what about you? So I agree in the sense of I don't know who I'd recommend it to. However, if someone we were somewhere and someone was like, "Yo, hey, did you ever see that movie?" I would enjoy talking about it. I feel like again. Oh. Um, this movie is not flawless by any means. I feel like there's a decent amount of solid writing in this movie. And like at times I was like, I don't want to finish it. Apparently this whole thing on the internet about people not willing to finish it, that they just could not take the tension that was happening throughout. Um, I, I, you know, part of that might be that this movie, I believe was released in 2020 or around that time. Right. Yeah. So think, that, that would yeah. make a lot of sense. People were not ready for a lot of tension. So you said it's not fully polished. Would you almost say that it's a uncut down? Oh, it's a more <laughs> uncut down. It's an uncut, uncut script. I can't uh, say it. Truthfully, speaking of tension, I get major anxiety when there's a lot going on. So I wasn't going to mention it, but now that you say that other people were going through this, I actually had to Wikipedia it mid movie because I'm like I need to know what the heck is going to happen to this guy but I didn't know the names well so that's why I thought maybe the twins were going to kill him because I didn't know because they were like oh such and such shoots him in the head and I'm like oh who's that so the whole time I knew like from the middle point like when he when they um put him in the trunk I was like what's going to happen like what what is this like I, I can't handle this anymore like I was paralyzed almost in it so <laughs> that's interesting that other people felt the same way about the tension We'll definitely be anxiety real quick as just like especially since we did Wolf of Wall Street. And I guess that kind of says like if we're looking at lists of movies with uh the most cussing or whatever, one is just drug fueled, you know, anxiety and the other one is gambling mob related anxiety. So uh, I that when I we first started the movie, I was just, when I first started the movie, I was like, Oh no. This is going to be Wolf of Wall Street Part 2. <laughs> I know. It surprisingly didn't have as many, many, like, subs, you know, it was just, it was just him being addicted. Like, I didn't see him addicted to anything else. Um, yeah. No. But what about you, Steve? Final thoughts? I mean, The weekend was addicted to that Coke. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the, weekend no one wanted, did the, weekend, yeah. the weekend just wanted three things. He wanted... Black light for some reason. <laughs> oh, yes. He wanted cocaine 
and he wanted to hit that Kanye West ex girlfriend or whatever. <laughs> Those were the three I, things that we wanted. He can't. But, uh, blacklight, like that, to me, almost felt like an inside joke. Blacklight is that like? Did he used to open his shows like that? I mean, I don't he know. He was like, I won't play if you guys have yeah. blacklight on the back. Maybe he's showing like a diva element. I, that that movie, the movie did a good job of with like just stuff that like could we have been without this, but it just added to yeah. the drama because it was just like okay, all right. Well, the insecurities so, that he just assumed that sorry that the girl was his girl was having you know just bathroom sex, <laughs> not just bathroom coke, but you that's know. what happens with the weekend. Anyway, uh, I will. <laughs> I would actually recommend this movie to people that, of course, enjoy drama uh, and have never watched this movie. I think it's a movie that you you may, it, it, especially if you enjoy drama. If you don't enjoy drama, don't watch it. But if you enjoy drama, it's a movie you got to watch at least once. And just like Dino, I don't know if I watch this movie again, but just like Professor, it's a movie that, that if someone were to watch it, I would be open to discussing it. Just because, oh, there's so much realism in this movie. And uh, I enjoy that aspect of it. I think I think the, the film itself gives you, like, it takes a while. But once you actually watch it from beginning to end, you really get to kind of get a little bit into that Adam Sandler character. Uh, of like the anxiety and the things that he's going through uh, after you figure out like, okay, what is really going on here? Uh, so overall, I, I really enjoyed the movie. I actually enjoyed it more than what I thought I was going to enjoy it. Nice, nice. And Sharonda? Yeah, I just think there's so many lessons to get out of it. And you know, we like to see happy in endings. So we were like really happy when he won, but it's just like, you can't do all this crap and just get away with it. You know what I mean? So it's also that like final vindication of like the satisfying feeling like, man, he finally got what he deserved. Um, That's almost a happy I, ending in itself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, you know? So, I mean, I guess I just take the lesson out of it. Like, you know, don't think that you're going to just take advantage of all these people and one day it's not going to catch up with you. Agreed. Agreed. Um, so my final thoughts, um, I definitely agree on lessons. Like if you really take a step back, you see how much privilege he already had. It seemed like, um, you know, if you own a jewelry store already, in a beautiful condo in New York. <laughs> like, I just feel like he got greedy and wanted more than what he had and took some risks. And maybe the risks paid off at first, but it just started like an addiction. Um, so it was just something to really reflect on. Like, man, like, be s always strive for more, but maybe be satisfied to a point where you won't do anything crazy like that. Like, everything was a risk. Everything was a gamble, literally. Um, he had to be on top of things all the time. Um, but I do think the movie was written well to show that story. Um, as far as like recommending it to others, it probably would be one of those things where if like I'm having a discussion with someone about like movies with gambling, um, I would bring it up like, oh, did you see Uncut Gems? Like a, whew, it's a really intense story about this guy who just like can't stop like manipulating everybody and can't stop gambling. <laughs> so. Um, overall, I liked it. I'm glad I did sit through it because if you would have asked me what that movie was about based on the first time I attempted to watch, I would have been like, I don't know, a guy with the jewelry store. I don't really know what's going on. <laughs> but I'm glad we watched and I discussed it with you guys. Um, but yeah. I thought maybe you would recommend this to people if uh, Julia Fox comes up in a conversation. <laughs> Who does she I'm going to watch heard? every Julia Fox movie as they come out now. <laughs> just because. It's like Megan Fox's little sister. We just don't know it. You know? I, know, like, I know, right? I'm like, when is that there might be some kind of happen? connection. You know, you got Kanye's ex and Machine Gun Kelly's ex, I think, right? Yeah, maybe so. There you go. Well. All righty. 
feel like Jason's not here. To- Steve, I've oh, got to uh, go ahead. You do it, Dino. I can't do it. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait. No. Hey, Steve. <laughs> what do you have for us next time? Next time? I don't know why you asked me, Headshot of Black and White Jason from the movies. <laughs> uh, because it is not my turn next week. It is El Profesor's turn. What? <sighs> So, I'm going to let you guys vote tonight, but we're going to have to do it in a way that you cannot make a decision to make it tied so that I have to make the decision because I'm sick of making the decision when I have moved up to a vote. <laughs> so, I have two movies tonight that I'm going to kick at you. Um, one I've never seen before. Uh, it's Gary Oldman's directorial debut. It's with Ray Winstone, who you guys probably know from um, The Departed. He was like... Uh, Jack Nicholson's second in command in that movie. He's tough. He beats a lot of people. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So it's called No By Mouth. And then the second one is an old movie. It's uh, Guy Ritchie's first movie. It's uh, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, which I love. So it could be either of these two movies, but if you guys vote the same, I, I don't know, Steve, we're going to have to come up with a new way because I don't want to vote for my own movie anymore. <laughs> I want no I want no control that way I can't get blamed later on. All right. So All right. let's go no by mouth one, lock stock mm-hmm. two. Okay. Crazy cover. Um all right. On the count of three, ready? Yep. Oh, use use your fingers. Oh, you got it. Yes. All right, thank God. So we're gonna watch <laughs> lock stock. And two smoking barrels. I'm never picking ever again. <laughs> Great movie. Well, I, great I, picked movie. It, I just picked it because of the actors. I'm like, I recognize actors there. Oh, have you, you seen, seen it? No, I haven't seen none of them. Oh, have okay. you, Marina? Have you seen it? Never. Uh, you saw it, Dina? Yeah, I think I got Toronto? the idea of it actually. Yeah, me too. That's a great, great, great film. Great film. There you go. We're gonna watch it next week. So for Sharonda Scott, Marina, El Dondino, El Professor, and me, Steve Destiny. We'll catch you next week. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.